Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer, angel therapy practitioner, Reiki master, and intuitive guide. And I'm here today, October 17th, 2022, on my solar return, because I was inspired to talk a little bit about what I mean when I say that I'm an angel therapy practitioner and an intuitive astrologer, I want to help you um, through my lens, my perception, my perspective, see how I see my soul's contract within my chart. And I, I've i commingled and integrated various um thoughts and ideas from various astrologers and from uh, ancient astrology wisdom, along with my own intuitive energy and with my own um, connection to spirit. And it's really helped me to uh, traverse these hard times and these transits as I see my soul's uh, participation within them and what these um, apparently um, Oh, I don't even know what to call it. They're very, very challenging times. We, we've talked a lot about Pluto and Saturn and Uranus and all these squares. So my, my point here is I think if I share my natal chart with you and show you a few key points, it may help you to look into your natal chart and to see those points. It'll also give you an idea of how I personally interpret a chart and um, what it's like to get a chart from me. So let me kind of start off and say that when I'm doing a personal chart and the way I'm going to show you my chart is in the Placidus system. I use the degrees to um, give me more detail about the intention. So when I say the degrees, uh, one through 12 covers the zodiac. Aries is one, second is Taurus, et cetera, et cetera. When we get to the 13th degree, we are repeating ourselves and we're going all the way back around the Zodiac. So the 13th degree is Aries, the 14th degree is Taurus, the 15th degree is Gemini. And then those final degrees, um, we go up to the Leo. And I find that fascinating because the 29th degree being Leo is also the degree of my heart, of having courage, of being brave, of enjoying life, of hobbies and entertainment. The 29th degree is the uh, reduces down to an 11, which is the master degree of thought. So all of this to me, all of, I'm going to try to explain it briefly. Obviously there's much more detail, but I'm hoping I can sort of give you an, an idea. And then when you look at your charts, maybe you'll see um, some patterns. Okay. So let me share my screen right now. Um, here we go. Okay, so this is my natal chart. We can see that my sun is here at 23 degrees of Libra. Um, this is on the fixed star Spica, and Spica is the voice of angels. One of my job titles is to be an angel therapy practitioner. This is not necessarily about divining your future, but using source energy, God and the angels to help empower you to be intentional within your life. So here, I'm. this fascinates me um, because I did not know for a long time that I was born on this fixed star. And yet, from childhood, I have felt the presence of angels and guides around me. Now I go over to my ruling planet. You can see here I'm an Aries rising and my ruling planet is Mars. Mars is in the sign of Libra. Most astrologers would call this conjunction combative. And in my youth, it may have been, but look at that 27th degree. 27, when we're going around um, I believe is Gemini. Yes, because 28 is Cancer and 29 is Leo. So in the Geminian degree, it's going to be about thinking, writing, teaching, speaking. One of the things that I do is I'm a spiritual teacher. Now we look at Neptune being in the sign of Scorpio at the sixth degree of Virgo. 
being of service, being of service to other people about the depths of the what's happening underneath. And I find this to be fascinating because I didn't put it in here, but my power of fortune is also in Scorpio. Um, I work with other people. Here's Mercury and the Aryan degree, which is about playing to my Mars and being brave in what I know, willing to stand out to represent Libran qualities, uh, harmony, peace, balance within relationships, within um, our lives, within our assertion of ourselves. And here's my nodal structure right here. And that is at the Gemini, Gemini degree. And so I find this fascinating because the South Node represents the wound. I shouldn't say the wound. It represents patterned behaviors. I have used words. I have been a thinker, a teacher in the past, and I could have potentially paid a large price for it because we see that indicated with Chiron here at the 22nd degree, which is a degree that represents death, physical death. Um, and we see that it's um, retrograde. And the things that Aquarius represents is liberation and rebellion. So I, I see a pattern here in my chart. I also see my Pluto at five degrees, the Leo degree, and I see Venus at the Capricorn degree. Now here I see Venus in Virgo as being practical, as really playing to the idea of my self-worth, of how I feel about myself. And while this is not a tight conjunction, in some ways that's great, it does to me indicate a strong service. Here we see my my everyday life being in, in at the degree of bravery and then spiritual service, Virgo, here is helping transform people's views of themselves and to allow themselves to prosper and feel that that is in some ways a spiritual mission to give life to the heart, to what your voice, your expression, and how that will bring bounty. Um, I also see Uranus here in a direct opposition to um, Chiron, which leads me to believe that I was rather, um, uh, let's say I could really get under people's skin by being very alien in the way that I think, the way that I express myself in the past. And that is part of what I'm working on in this lifetime, because Chiron is the wound that we bring into this world that is also the gift. So I look at this this chart and I see so much of my mm -hmm. own patterns, how I've been and how I've shown up throughout my life. And I want to offer this too, because Pluto was here in Virgo when I was born and it's literally gone through all of these signs and been conjunct all of these planets as it is now at the final degrees of Capricorn in transit. When I discovered that about my chart I realized that it was about looking deeper. Look at my eighth house. What do I really believe? What do I really think? Am I brave enough at the Aryan degree to dig deep into my co-creation of my existence? And here, part of my life path is very much about spiritual service, about helping to create process to a uh, process of thought and to help other people. Um, I, I'm so grateful for what I've learned, because now as Pluto has been squaring these dynamics, Pluto is now has been squaring my sun for the last few years. It's been now about to square my Mars and we can see my 26 degree um, uh, Aries rising. And it's, I think that Pluto is transit is at 26 degrees right now. So as I look at this and I take comfort in the idea of knowing that Pluto's already gone through these planets and a conjunction is a fusion of energy there's there is a um, a merging i believe what the squares are about as this are about integration and the kind of the the push pull between an old pattern and wanting to implement a new pattern pattern and learning the wisdom that it's not about releasing something but rather integrating it so um, this is very fascinating to me. Now, I haven't even addressed my moon, which is my emotional body. Um, my moon 
is in Taurus at nine degrees. That's the Sagittarian degree. So I'm very emotionally attached to my spiritual beliefs, to the involvement of my soul, to the empowerment of my soul and to the empowerment of other people's soul. And while there is an opposition here to this, these planets over here in, um, in Scorpio, I believe that this is where I, uh, this is where I see my sibling represented here in Mercury. This is where I see my childhood a little bit. My, there was alcoholism in my life. And I also see opportunities for integration as I take these experiences because Taurus rules our family history and I use them to be of service to others. So um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now. So the reason I'm showing you this is because I'm, I want to explain a little bit about how I use these degrees, their position, their um, their evolution throughout. Like they start in that snap, snapshot of your natal chart, but there are patterns that are going to take place throughout your life's journey that... Um, are more than just the progress chart. Because when I look at the progress chart, there's things that don't look like they move a lot. So I'm really talking about the transits, the, the weather cycles, astro weather cycles that you've walked through. And if you look at some of the degrees and you equate them to the characteristics of the sign and not just the challenging characteristics, but the higher vibrational characteristics. Oftentimes you'll hear me talk about Aries being the hero. And that's where I believe that as Pluto was conjunct my Mars, I learned about my aggression. I learned about my assertiveness. I learned about how I show up in the world. And now as I experience the square, this is about the integration and still being assertive, still being brave within my own life to be authentic and yet to, um, to integrate new energies, to be aware of new, do I want to be uh, right or do I want to be happy type of concepts. So this is what I think as, as I define myself as an intuitive astrologer, these are the things that I look at. I look at your, your nodal structure. I look at the degrees. I look at the houses. I look at Chiron and I, I see what is the wound and the gift. And then I look at some of these slower outer planets, uh, especially Pluto being so psychological and Uranus offering liberation. Um, Uranus goes around the Zodiac once every 84 years, if my memory serves me properly. So you really only usually historically visit Uranus in any house one time, um, maybe twice, but you know, you got to live a long life to do that. And then Pluto, as I recall, takes 284 years to go around the Zodiac. So Pluto's really giving us an opportunity to look where we have enslaved ourselves to other people's perception of us or other people's resources, or we've dominated other people uh, with our resources. And when we look at Pluto and the idea that Pluto rules uh, the occult, oftentimes the human will think, oh, that's just the taboo, the voodoo, the, the dark side. But for me, it's the magic of alignment that appears to be voodoo to the human underneath the veil. Um, I believe that astrology falls under that occult. I believe that the laws of attraction and the divine wisdom of the universe falls under that, that sign of Pluto. So when we're willing to dig past the uh, heard experience of looking how are other people perceiving us because we've spent a lot of time in those two uh, three houses of of Virgo being of service and and Libra being um, a sign of partnership both professional and, and personal and then the the codependency that can be represented in Scorpio uh, because it's all about common resources. We also experience metamorphosis in Scorpio. And one of the things that, um, and that's because Pluto and Mars both rule Scorpio. So as we think, what does, what is the metamorphosis here? Is it an opportunity to see where 
I am being empowered by these challenges. I am being empowered by some of these divine disruptions because Pluto is always going to be disruptive. And I can't even begin to tell you there's so, so much violence in my childhood and so much disruption um, and some, you know, no, I don't have the worst story in the world, but you know, it's, a, it's my story. So as I have gotten older today, being my solar return again, I see a wisdom. Sorry, I got a frog in my throat. So I want to encourage you guys to look at your charts, put them in the Placidus house system for your personal um, dynamic of where the houses, um, where the cusps are, because they too offer information and a theme. <clears throat> well, that's it for me. I hope you found value in this. I'm losing my voice right now. So I'm going to say bye, everybody. <laughs>